Hello Linux fans, Rob here and welcome to Linux Quest. Today we're going to take a look at the control panel in Deepin 15.5 and we're going to look at why I say that this is one of the most elegant control panels in a Linux operating system to date. So stay tuned. So here we are on part two of the ongoing series for Deepin 15.5 and the control panel or the control center or the settings panel for a lot of Linux operating systems and other OS's in general uh, can sometimes be difficult to navigate. I don't know what it is, uh, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot, well, I kind of do, I mean, there's lots of information and you want to put that all in one central place and, you know, you got to keep it easy to navigate. Uh, you've got to be intuitive, you know, so that the user can figure out, okay, what is it exactly I'm doing as I go through and tick off these options. So there's a lot going on there, and it's a really, really important part of any operating system. Well, I think the Deepin team really checks off most of the marks um, that you would want to check off for a really nice, intuitive, elegant control center um, there's a few areas that, you know, there are room for improvements, but nevertheless, it's, it's going to be, I think, the model for other developers to look at when it comes to setting things up in a nice intuitive way. Now, there's two easy ways to access the control center. You'll see here this gear icon, and this is the default theme within Deepin. So you'll see that there. If you click that, you're going to see the panel slide out from the right. Um, now there's another area over here and it's called a hot corner or an active corner where you can hover and that'll slide out. Now that's an area where it's not as quick on this particular system and smooth as I'd like to see it. Um, part of that is the system's fault. This is just an older system, you know, with four gigs of RAM, that kind of thing. Uh, but you can activate it there. So let's go ahead and step through this. The first thing you're going to notice is that you've got this kind of blur effect or translucent effect, which really looks nice and modern. Uh, there's another operating system that I won't speak of in this video that's working on something that kind of looks like this. And as I saw some of the news about it, I thought, you know, here you go, copying Linux once again. So anyway, uh, up top, you've got the time and the date with the uh, icon here to the left. And then you've got this navigation panel which will allow you to quickly access certain uh, categories of the settings within the control panel. So as you hover over, you'll notice that it changes to more of a solid view. And then you'll notice this name changes here. So you go from accounts to display, default applications, personalization, network, sound, time and date, power management, mouse, keyboard, update, and system information. So the icons match what the description should be. So all of that's, that's really good. Then if you scroll on down, and I'm skipping something right here, you'll see that pop up. I'm skipping that for just a second on purpose. But if you scroll on down, you'll notice you've got a slider here for your system volume and your screen brightness. And then you've got quick access to your wireless network as well as your display settings. Now I like that because those are two things you're going to want to set up out of the gate. So for example, this is a laptop connected to an external monitor. So I want to quickly be able to go in and choose which display I want to show the system on, as well as your wireless network. That's going to be one of the first things you'll do uh, is, is set that up so you want to have quick access to that. All right, so we're going to back up here. I skipped over this on purpose. You've got three dots. And at first glance, if you're not paying attention, you may not just pick up on the fact that this panel can change. So as the three dots indicate, you've got three different sections. Uh, the next one here is the weather. And yes, we're uh, going to get some snow here, it looks like, over the next two days. Um, and then the other panel here is going to show you any system information. So earlier, my network just disconnected and reconnected for no apparent reason. Uh, but anyway, it's going to show you that. You can simply hit clear all. If you have updates or other system information, that's going to show up there as well. And you just toggle back and forth. All right, so now we're going to go into the actual settings area. 
And I'm not going to go into detail in every section of the settings area, but I do want to give you a feel for the navigation process and the type of information that you can control here because it's pretty in-depth and at first glance you don't really pick up on that the way they keep things kind of neatly organized. Now as you scroll or, or excuse me as you click any of these icons it's going to take you into the same area and then you'll see you basically are scrolling up and down to get into the various categories. This is more of a quick jump to any particular category. So we're going to start at the top with accounts and then scroll our way down. So you'll see here uh, the user account Linux Quest is set up. If you want to add a new user you simply click there. Now here up top, I don't want to miss this either, you can go from the long list back to the large icons that we saw for Quick Jump. So that's a nice addition. All right, we'll scroll on down. Next, you have display. So uh, you've got a really high resolution monitor, for example. You could scale things up a little bit so it's easier to see. Uh, wireless screen projector. Uh, so if you had that, you could click into this and go through the setup process. Uh, brightness settings. Then you have individual custom settings that you can set up for your particular display or monitor. And again, I'm not going to go through and, and set everything up as, as I'm scrolling through. I want to try to keep the video as short as possible here and get right into the details. You have default applications. So if you click on that, for example, you'll go through and be able to really easily see what's controlling as default here in any given category. And just with one click, change that. Nicely done. Uh, I do want to spend a minute here in personalization. We're going to go into theme. We had a um, Linux Quest viewer who just was curious about the, the uh, default themes within 15.5. Uh, so here you have the nice uh, round theme here. Um, Maria, um, Maria, I guess that's how they're pronouncing that. Papyrus, which is always nice. This one I thought is kind of funny. You've got C. So it's this ocean theme going on here. I haven't really used that one. And then the default deepen theme, which is very nice. I uh, have that set up. And then I installed the oxygen theme just to kind of see. I was playing around with themes and wanted to see how that it would implement. And uh, for the most part, it was just fine. Moving on down in themes, you've got cursor options, which are all very nice. And all of this applies very well. And I don't want to skip over this. You've got dark and light. So two choices there. If you're looking for some real in-depth control of your theme, say like on KDE, you won't really find that here. Um, but what I do like about it is that you can install additional themes and then once they're applied, they apply extremely well throughout the system. So you do have some customization here. It's just not in-depth like you might find on say XFCE or KDE for example. All right, so moving on, you can also go in and adjust your fonts, font size, um, and change your fonts. And I like the way, as you go from one area to the other, there's a consistency in place. So um, let's go down to something else here. Um, well, let's see, we'll go into hotspot. So you'll see, I mean, what I mean there is that once you go into a deeper settings area, it's consistent with the previous uh, menu so you don't feel lost so it's not like you've gone from one area to something that looks different and I mentioned that because you'll see that in systems where they got almost there and things were consistent up unto a point and then they lost it and, and you know I've looked at enough systems to know that that's where you're kinda let down as someone who's looking for these details and then you get to that area and you go really you, you were, you know, almost there. You're 97 point percent of the way there, and then you just fell off the map. So anyway, um, I digress. We'll move on here. All right, I don't want to lose my place. Next up is network. So you can set up your uh, wireless network or your wired network. You could set up hotspots, and that works really well. That's a new feature, I think, within Deep in 15.5 where you can set up a, uh, a hotspot and share it with people around you. Set up your passwords, the whole nine... Uh, the whole works there. Uh, you could set up VPN, proxy, uh, get into more details about your network. Next up you've got speaker and they do a really good job here. It makes it extremely easy to go in and choose your external mics and things like that. If you've got external speakers, all of that's easy to set up. If you go into advanced mode, you'll see a long list of everything on your system and with a simple click, you're able to change those settings. 
You've got sound effects here. Uh, Deepin by default has sound effects uh, you know, when you empty the recycle bin, things like that. Time and date. And uh, I will say I'm happy to report that 15.5 has fixed my previous issues where the, the uh, time would go astray. I mean, just out of the blue, all of a sudden I'd boot up and the system time would be totally wrong and I'd have to go in and change things. That's not been a problem with 15.5, so they've fixed that and everything works as it should. Next up is power management. And again, this is intuitive with a slider bar. Uh, so you can set up when your monitor will suspend or when your computer will suspend. Do you want a password or not when you go to wake those systems up? And this one was really nice to see here um, because you don't always, always find this where it should be. So I've got, again, this is a monitor connected to a laptop. I actually closed the lid and set the monitor up the way I've got things set up. Maybe I'll post a picture one day of my office set up. And so I do not want the computer to suspend when I close my lid on my laptop. So you toggle that off there. Uh, again, mouse settings here, really intuitive. Left hand, right hand mode, double click speed. You got a little, uh, this has been here for a while, but this is a little pop-up kitten here to test your double click speed. Kind of cute. Uh, mouse pointer speed, touchpad speed. You can turn the touchpad off. So as you scroll down into those settings. And again, these categories here, uh, so you could click on that and that'll take you right back to like the main categories and then you could jump right back um, so that you go right to that area. Next up on the list is update and I'm happy to report that the update process has been smooth. I do need to get into the update settings and take a look at the different mirrors to see if I can get better speeds. But there's a long list here. I just haven't taken the time to go in and test that yet but uh, happy to report that the updates have been flawless. And then we get down here to system information where uh, it's going to tell you, you know, the addition, things like that. And then last but not least, you've got boot menu options where you can change the theme or the startup delay of the uh, boot up. So let's kind of go back out and just kind of take a general look again. That is a quick overview of, again, what I'm going to say. And how many times, I'll tell you what, if you guys were playing a drinking game, you could have a drink every time I say the word again in this video. How about that? Um, it's very elegant. I think this is what other developers should take a look at when they're working on their control center or control panel or control settings area. And, you know, if you take a look at Solus in the Raven menu, there's uh, some similarities going on there. It's a, it's a way to keep things all together, um, easy to navigate, but yet out of your way. And so uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I just want to applaud the team at Deepin. Keep up the great work here. And we'll be doing a part three series. I uh, haven't decided yet on what that's going to be, but stay tuned for a third part in the Deepin series. Thanks for watching.